Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Suzerain Kingdom of Rizia Edition. Now, when we left off, we dealt with our kind of consecration as king and we started to work on some of our military armed forces and learned how to look through more of the royal decrees. Um, and there's a lot of them, goodness me. Not all that we can do, given we don't have a huge amount of budget left. Um, there's a new one here that I haven't actually seen before. But again, Hugo and Lucita are really not very fond of a lot of these a lot of these policies, including some of the health education funding, which would generally be very useful. But I'm guessing that because it's to do with kind of the poor of the country, that's why people don't really like it. Or certainly why Hugo and Lucita don't like it. But first we need to talk about the Rizian football industry, because apparently that's important enough to warrant a whole conversation. So, the Russian Football Federation is at a crossroads. Royal Montecla remains a global icon, IFC Porto Drazon, an ambitious but small club, uh, struggles in the shadow. The choice of investment strategy could significantly influence the future trajectory of Russian football, either by bolstering the prestige of an already renowned club or by nurturing emerging talents to foster a more competitive domestic landscape. We will support Porto Drazon with one budget. Let's put our budget down to zero. But I think that'll be okay, because I think that's the end of the turn, if I've understood this correctly, which I may not have done. But we'll see how things go. Is there anything we can quickly <laughs> Is there anything quickly we can put in to get a little bit more budget going forward? We still have quite a bit of energy, so that's not too Bad. We could sign the religious authority law, but I'm not sure that's worth doing. Welfare privatisation we could do. Hmm. The Kingdom transitions the matter of the welfare, health and education services to the private sector. Oh, I'm not sure about that. It does give us some budget, but it does also knack our authority. Landowners, landowner's tax is useful, but probably not very popular. Can increase some provincial levy obligations. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But it requires a lot of authority to do. Let's just press continue. See what happens. I imagine that will be the turn. Now, the Golden Kingdom. Yeah, there we go. There's our turn. So now we have some budget back, we have some energy back, and some authority back. What do we need to do next? So to do with oil fields and consummating on foreign relations. Any new decrees that we want to kind of go for? I'm hoping that the buildings that I've been producing, yeah, the Romatoros Hospital is, is halfway done, which is useful. Um, well, I, th I feel like I enacted another decree somewhere as well. Was it just the income tax? So I feel like I should really be doing some more. Now this is interesting. The Port and Naval Shipyard. One authority, three budget down. It's, it's a lot. One marines on completion. One military ship and submarine per completion. It, it's very useful for our naval kind of growth, but it's just it's a lot. Unfortunately, I feel like a lot of the stuff that is useful for kind of the local population is stuff that a lot that Hugo and Lucita don't really like. This one's interesting to me though. Legalize illegal substances. The state and landmark decision decrees the legalization of substances previously declassified as illegal. The transformative policy is aimed at reducing the burden on the judicial system, undermining illicit trade, and promoting responsible use through regulation. Funds formally allocated for enforcement will be redirected towards education, addiction, treatment programs, and public health initiatives. This measure recognizes the shifting societal perspectives on substance use and prioritizes harm reduction. Despite the fact that Hugo and Lucita don't like this, I think I'm going to sign it anyway. Uh, so there's a lot of situations which have just changed, which is possibly interesting. Uh, high amount of illegal substance use, an escalating opioid crisis, 
My hope is that we're going to have done something useful there. Probably not in... Something tells me that might have been a bad decision, but it's a decision I've... Decision I've made nonetheless. Let's hope it's not going to be too... Um, let's hope it's not going to cause a huge issue um, going forward. But it does give us additional budget per turn. I wish I'd done it at the end of last turn, to be honest. But hey-ho. Let us deal with the oil field operations. So, a significant chapter in Rizzi's oil history is drawing to a close. The Novissa oil field, a Dato, an instrumental asset since its discovery in 1895, faces imminent shutdown. Despite the depletion of one of its abundant resources, the field has continued to play a role in meeting Rizzi's oil demands. Under the armory management of Rizzi oil and gas, the field has stood the test of time, and nature's limits are becoming evident. We got some energy, that's fine. It's depleted. My hope is that we will still push forward, but again, might have been a bad decision. Okay, council meeting for our relations. The day of my foreign policy meeting had arrived, and it was a hot one. The fans in Palace Resna provided little relief. I decided to take in some fresh air in the palace gardens. Pavel had hired a new groundskeeper who faithfully maintained his father's arrangements. Before he was my butler, my friend had explained to me that the plants and flowers were laid out here geographically. Recon ferns in the east, Zena lilies to the south, a Rumberg style rose garden in the north. To the west was a labyrinthine hedge maze made of laurels donated from the kingdom of Narberg. I spent a while wandering around, then returned to the middle of the garden where a series of stone sculptures were surrounded by Rizian palms and succulents. To my left, I saw Vienna reading a book on a bench beneath the decorative stone arch. In the date plum grove to my right, I caught a glimpse of my mother. It's daughter Vienna. She's the future of the country. Hello, father. Um, good to see you outside the council chambers. Do you have any questions about the past few meetings? I have plenty, but I'll figure them out in my own time. All of this council stuff is old hat for you, isn't it? You've even served with some of the same people before. Hmm. It's different now that I'm the one in charge. I can't imagine how it feels to hold all that power. What do you think of the House of Delegates? Will you go talk to them? Um, I'll take their opinions into consideration. Any good monarch listens to the word of the public. Queen Liza always said that. A good monarch listens, a great monarch acts. Liza acted too. A clock chimed in the distance. It was time for the meeting. Lead the way, Your Highness. As Vina and I walked into the council chambers, we found the other councillors already there, deep in conversation. A superpower suddenly taking interest in the part of the continent. What's next? All of our children will have to learn Arcasian. The decision wasn't made with any ill intent towards Rizia. There are greater global forces at work than what's happening in our corner of South Macopa. What the superpower decides affect us. Their intent is of no importance. Silence! No, uh, Kit's catching me up. The three of them noticed me and fell silent. Excuse us, Your Majesty. We were just discuss discussing the news concerning Esibu's membership in the ATO. We don't know anything about the situation yet. We'll have to wait and see what happens. A reasonable response, Your Majesty. Respectfully, Your Grace, there's nothing reasonable about allowing Arcasia and its puppets to spread instability across the globe. What would you have us do, Duchess Cesaro? We're on shaky enough ground with Vesvia as it is. Of course we should act sensibly, but we need to show the Republic and its new friends that Rizia can hold its own. Hmm. And what's our current relations with Vesvia like? I would categorise them as neutral but frosty, Your Majesty. Queen Liza's diplomacy kept us on good terms with Lesbia for a time after their transition to democracy, but things were beginning to sour even before the Palace conflict. We still maintain embassies in each other's countries, but I haven't met with their foreign ministry since before the election of their new Prime Minister, Alvarez. Uh, what are the security implications of this alliance? We can definitely expect the Arcasian military to increase their presence in Lesbia, Lesbia already houses, houses Arcasian military personnel, air and naval bases cannot be far behind. I can't say for certain that the firepower will be directed against us in the case of a conflict, 
who does enhance the threat that Lesbia and potentially Pales poses to our kingdom. Uh, is there any issues with the economics? It's too early to say, Your Majesty. Our most significant economic relationship with Lesbia is our partnership in the Meftium International Trade Zone. Having Arcasia behind them might well embolden Espia to push for a larger share in the ITZ. They'd also have Levagas Land and Morella to contend with. Lespia using Arcasia's backing to strengthen its economic ties with Pardes can also have negative ramifications, especially when it comes to the new gas field. Okay, what do you think I should do? Everyone began talking at once, and Hugo motioned for silence. In my view, Rizia should bolster alliances with our fellow monarchies like Rumberg and the rest of the Guild of War allies for commercial exchange. Building stronger bonds with them will not only enrich us, it will counterbalance ATO's democratic influence. This is true, but we can't rely on Grace, good name, to come up to our aid in a conflict. For that, we will need to build up our military and defensive capabilities. I'd say it's more crucial to form new trade relations with our new neighbours. If Lesbia becomes even more of an economic juggernaut in our region, It'll upset the balance of power. And I don't think we should ignore the opportunity to throw our relationship with Lesbia itself. I, for one, would rather handle them as a friend than foe. Uh, right. Here's what I think. You yeah, all have good ideas. I'll consider a combination of these approaches. Hugo nodded. Very good, Your Majesty. Mr. Esquibel, as you have prepared an overview of our current geopolitical situation prior to this development, would you care to proceed with that? Certainly, Your Grace. Lorento walked to the chamber's back wall and pulled down a map of southeastern Mercopa. What shall we discuss first? Uh, let's talk about Whalen. So, Whalen, relations with our one times allies have been turbulent to best since the Civil War. The international unpopularity of the current president, can't speak, current president Victor Smirk, has only complicated matters. Hmm. My father made a deal with Whalen on good faith. So far, they respected the deal. It's not wrong. Why might I see it that way? When it's access to Zeal's land and resources help bring us out of recession after the war, Smolok will have difficulty letting go of such a valuable asset. Can we count on him to honour the terms of the treaty? Smolok is not as weak as he seems. It will take a great deal of time and effort before our manpower matches his. He may act bold. Currently, their foreign ministry is working in close cooperation with us, and President Smolok has promised to honour the treaty. In the meantime, any perceived aggression on our part may only give him an excuse to break it. Can the international community be relied to intervene if Smolik breaks a pact? Given how many countries depend on Wesleyan oil, either directly or indirectly, I wouldn't be so sure. The funding Berlin has received from the United Container may have also Smolik, uh, may also have Smolik believing he can act with impunity. Um, and what about the people of Zeal? Half the country's native Rizian population fled during the Civil War, like the Queen's mother's parents, I recall. Among those who were stubborn enough to stay, opinion is divided. We have to remember that it's been almost 25 years. Uh, we'll try it diplomatically. Smolik's current focus is on eradicating terrorism by Bloods, a Golconda's ethnic group native to Wellen and Sordant. We had a lot of issues with them in the original campaign. He's been very vocal by his desire for cooperation on that front. Not all Bloods are terrorists, Your Grace. Mr. Smolak is particularly interested in a separatist group known as the Bloodish Freedom Front, being rumoured to be receiving support from none other than Rumberg. I would advise getting, against getting involved with the BFF, where isolation within Mercopa could be a strategic advantage on our end. For his posturing, I believe that uh, Smolak wants Ruzia as an ally. So when are we next going to Ireland? As a matter of fact, you're slated for a trip to Zeal at the end of this year for the second to last Vezek Rusian Friendship Day. Uh, what's that? The Friendship Day is the celebration that's been held in Zeal each year since the treaty was signed. Since Smolak took over, he's used the occasion to trot out all the shiny new tanks, Wellens, oil money, and United Contanans funding has bought him. 
Your presence will at least remind him of the occupation's temporary nature. I'll talk to him maybe we come to a productive agreement. He had a moral impulse, but this is unfortunately not only this is unfortunately only a ceremony, not a diplomatic talk. For now, I propose we move on with our briefing. Uh, what about Palles? I was just about to bring up the Grand Duchy. Your father confided in me about your duty with Duke Reinhardt, but he never told me what came of it. You want to renew relations with Rizzi and Palles? As do I. It's refreshing to hear you say that. I myself advise your father to speak with the New Duke of Palles, to no avail, of course. Compared to his brother Nujoma, Axel Reinhardt seems far more amenable to a thaw between our countries. He wasn't even born when Rizia and Palais were fighting, and I expect he is beginning to see the disadvantages of staying connected to Lesbia. Uh, Palais still has a Rizian speaking population. Do they still have any influence? They are a minority, but a vocal one. They believe in the preservation of the Rizian language, but they still consider themselves Palaisian at heart. Jugnyoma's proposed Rizian ban was a bridge too far for them. They seem to heavily favour his brother. Okay. Are you leaning towards any particular dip diplomatic strategy regarding Palace, Your Majesty? Um, I bear no ill will towards Palace. You're right, a closer relationship would be advantageous. We'll try that one. Lorento nodded. It will, Your Majesty, especially if we need to negotiate ownership of the gas fields near dear Elena mentioned near during her briefing. Yes, explosions are still ongoing, but this is a good indication that both Rizian and Palace could have a claim to the new resource. Shall I continue? Uh, what about Swordland? Now the Colonel has decided to retire, you mean? His success is called Iwald Alfonso. From everything I've heard, he's Sol's exact opposite. Uh, and what does that mean? Because of course this happens before the original game, from memory. Think sweeping privatisation and tax cuts. Sol is forced out of power, more women in prominent positions, although he has yet to pass the kind of liberty reforms of love Liza did. Speaking of Liza, she is the one who first opened trade negotiations with Sordand back when it was still a kingdom. But Sol's disdain for the monarchy kept us from continuing down that path. The Alfonso administration, meanwhile, has no such qualms about royalty. In fact, his new development minister, Gus Major, has already had personal, de personal business dealings in Rizia. A friend, Mr. Montoro of the RRG, has been making overtures to the Swordish oligarchy, it seems. Birds of crassly, ostentatious plumage flock together. Uh, what does Sordon want from us? That hasn't been discussed yet. The country already has abundant gas resources. They could be looking to shore up their central bank with gold in the wake of Alfonso's privatisation spree. I'll contact you once Alfonso has agreed on a date for his visit. And what about the former empire of Meridia? Do you want to discuss Morella or Derdia? Let's start with Morella. You've already heard about the new left-wing ruling coalition, correct? Um, sure. Hugo Grimis. The new Prime Minister Comrade Alma Saltana worries me. Lesbia and the ATO are enough of a threat without the Malienvists knocking at our back door. As long as we, st I just want to remain on good terms with people. That's all I really care about. Their leanings do affect our relationship, Your Majesty. Correct, Elena. Morella doesn't stand a chance of entering the Contanan Security Pact on its current levels of poverty. But there are rumours that Prime Minister Saltana has been arranging meetings with Vagaslandian Chancellor Emma, uh, Emmerich Hegel. Um, and how are relationships with Vagasland at the moment? Neutral of Your Majesty. As we all know, House Taurus has historical ties to the late Valgus Empire, but Chancellor Hegel isn't exactly brewing with nostalgia for that era. So far, our trade relationship with Morella has not been affected, nor has our partnership in the international trade zone. But Morella and Vegasan teaming up in that area could potentially be more of a concern than Lesbia. As for Morella's neighbour, Derdia, our relations with them have been strained since the country's conversion to a theocracy. However, we still maintain a number of cooperative agreements, including our acceptance of dirty migrants as they their hands. I must say that the Supreme Wiseman, Georgia Asmal, did not approve our ban on Golconda's pilgrims from Rizian holy sites. Yes, His Majesty and I discussed that by plan prior to our ceremony. Hmm. 
If the ban is if the ban is harming our relations, maybe we should reconsider. I would not be opposed to replacing the Golconda spam with one on, say, Dasnurists. They may have strayed, gentlemen, but Golcondus and Dasnurus are both our brethren. I am merely worried the growing numbers of Golcondus visitors at our site like Plavo and their rather physical interpretation of our religion were alienating the true believers. I'll point out that our stance on Golcondus is far gentler than Morella's. Yes, they've taken to blocking dirty ends of the border entirely, resulting in some rather nasty armed skirmishes. Um, I take it the Merlins won't be thrilled if we revoke our own ban. No, they've been ha having a hard enough time keeping the Golcondus at bay. I say what you want about Dodin beliefs, you can't argue with their weaponry. It's part of their warrior culture, Duchess. Their practice is centred on martial discipline and physical strength. Can Dodin be bargained with? Everyone can be bargained with, Your Majesty, like Victor Smolak. Mr. Asmal might be looking for a way to end his country's geopolitical isolation. And I believe that's everything. Lorenzo turned away from the map towards me. There is more one country we haven't discussed. Rumberg. Uh, please continue. For the moment, Queen Beatrice and her country are firmly allied with Rizia. Mr. Miss Werner already mentioned the large amounts of gold we can we export to the country through their strategic port Grim. We also have a deal allowing Rumberg ships priority access to our ports in Port Drazen and Monkeys. We are, in essence, the gateway to the end. Takian Sea. But militarily speaking, the alliance doesn't amount to much. Rumberg will supply us with arms in case of war, but neither of our countries is officially obligated to come to the other's aid. And does Rumberg want anything else from us? Maybe not from us, but the country's energy needs are insatiable. The Queen's interest in any country with oil or natural gas resources. In other words, if we do start drilling in the new field of Alice, I expect her excellency will soon come calling. Uh, being one of Rumberg's main energy suppliers would definitely strengthen our partnership. It would, whether that's good or bad in the eyes of the international community, is another question. I remind the Council of our prior conversation regarding ATO and the necessities of strengthening our bonds with other monarchies, especially Rumberg. Fortunately, we have living evidence of that bond right here at the table, and all eyes turn to Vina. She looked up for the notes she'd been taking. Um, yes, don't worry, Aunt B still dotes on me, and like the daughter she never had. Good. See to it that you remain in Her Excellency's good graces. Hmm. When it's time we arranged a visit with Aunt B. Anything for the kingdom. Hugo glances at his cock. Was that clock even? Goodness me, clock. Not the other one. Clock. Uh, what was all that from... Was that all from you, Mr. Escobel? I did have one more proposition before we adjourn. On a fairly risk-free way to increase our geopolitical footprint without losing any country's favour is to expand Rizia's soft power. We also have spoken of the needs to stoke pro-Rizian pro sympathies in both Zeal and Palas. I would therefore suggest funding both branches of the uh, Ariana Taurus Association in both those regions. And what does that do? It's a government-funded organisation that promotes Rizian culture abroad. It's currently active in Rheinberg and a few other Grace members. Its satellites, uh, it satellites organise Rizian language classes, concerts, arts, exhibitions, traditional festivals. Uh, I myself volunteered with the ATA as an ambassador for the time. I can vouch for its integrity. I can see the use of a programme, but wouldn't it be costly? Uh, expanding the ATA to both Zero and Palace would indeed in eat into our budget. I like the idea. It could even give us an edge in upcoming trade deals. But if you want to be frugal, I'll choose between the two regions. Hmm, we don't have that much budget to work with. Uh, we'll fund Palace for now and see how it goes. Consider it done, Your Majesty. Uh, good work, everyone. I think it's time we adjourned. Excellent idea, Your Majesty. Thanks for listening, everyone. I do hope I haven't been too much of a bore. No, but it's uh, it, it's part of the thing of run, running a kingdom. You need to know about your foreign policy. Any time, Your Majesty. He rolled the map back up and collected his belongings. I walked out to the chambers, glad to be done for the day. 
So, some, okay, we've got uh, a couple of situations. Situation updates. We've got a uh, worsening housing crisis. And we might need to do something about that housing crisis. We can expand the border guards. Two authority, one budget, one tourism down. One drug trade down, however. Given the amount of illegal substance use, that might be good to combat the opioid crisis. Does mean our tourism goes down. Does take a couple of turns for construction, but we're going to sign that. We're going to spoil the border guard, expand the border guards even. It's a border post upgrade in progress. And if I go back to the royal decrees, I think I probably also want to. We've still got a lot of energy, but I don't know how long it's going to last for. Um, where's the oil field one? Because that would whack up our energy, which is quite useful. We could sell some military equipment for budget. We've got quite a bit of equipment at the moment, so I wouldn't be opposed to doing so. I think we might just sell some military equipment to the international market. Although some people are not going to be all too happy about that. Hmm. But I would like to keep working on some things for sure. This is a big expenditure here, but it would be worth a lot in four turns to get 3 energy per turn on completion. It's a long term, very much a long term thing. In homage to our ancestral heritage and to boost the tourism. Yeah, we could do this one. Two turn construction, minus two budget, minus two authority, but does give us public sentiment and tourism. Which might be not bad. Or we can go for the university. There's a, there's a lot to, to think about, a lot to decide on. We still have quite a bit of energy, I just don't know if that energy is going to collapse at some point. I'm concerned about not using too much. Uh, housing for the poor, we do have an issue with housing. So I will sign the housing decree. And hopefully that will help with our worsening housing crisis. But again, we're down to one budget again. <laughs> so what else can we do? We do a religious tax here. Two budget returns, quite nice. But it's going to diplomatically cause some problems, I would say. It will precip uh, precipitate diplomatic complexities as countries like Wellen and Rundberg, with their substantial dust nourish policies on populations, perceive this policy as an affront. Don't really want to do that then. We've done a couple of um, royal decrees that I know Hugo and the Duchess are not going to be all too fond of, so we don't want to do too many more of those. Don't really want to do minus two budget per turn, even though it would be very useful. It's a big loss of budget. But it is... Long term economic momentum will more than compensate. Do it. We need to work on our economy. Authorities down, our budget's down. We do have some energy, so we can we might I might sell a little bit of our energy off. Uh so one energy for one budget. Three energy for two budgets. Uh, 
Let's go for uh, the first one. Just get we'll sell one NG. Gives us one budget to operate with. Should we need to going forwards? Okay, so let's read the report. Swordish president, president can't speak. Errol uh, uh, Alfonso will be arriving in Port of Drazen on Monday. In lieu of his vice president, he'll be accompanied by his development minister, Minister Gus Manger. As this is Sordon's first visit to Rizia in many years, a morning of diplomatic ceremonies at Palace Rezna has been planned, followed by talks in the evening and the afternoon. And a banquet in the evening, even. So, do we include Elena in these trade, land, in these trade discussions? The Swordish delegation is expected to bring up their reopening of the Swordish region trade relations during their upcoming visit. While Treasury Councillor Elena Verde would normally be present for such a discussion, Development Minister Gus Majors was requested to speak with the King alone. Oh, What do we do there? I'm gonna have her stay behind. Because I want good relations with Swordland, although that means she's probably not going to be very happy with us. We do have strong border security, which is excellent. We're no longer making a profit of energy per turn, so we are going to have to find some way to get that boosted in the right direction again. So where's something that we can do? Construction has something to do with energy be useful. There's this, but it requires a lot of time to do. And that requires another two energy to do so. As with the hydroelectric dam, but that requires a lot of money. <laughs> An authority that we do not have at the moment. Could, however, do this one here. If we get two more budget from somewhere. So three turn construction. It's going to be a long time before it's done. But I'm going to give it a go. And hope it doesn't go wrong. I'm going to sell some military equipment off. I think, in order to be able to do that. Sell some military equipment to the international market. That gives us two budgets. It's not very popular. But it will also strengthen diplomatic and defence ties with allied nations. So we're going to do that. So it gives us plus two budget. We, do, we have lost a little bit of our military equipment, but we still have enough, I would say, going forward. I would think, anyway. Um, so let's go back to the Royal Decree. Now we could increase our conscription, but that's not particularly popular. And does knocks out a lot of our budget. So we're going for quite a few long-term things here, but I'm hoping it's going to really help. This is fairly popular amongst, people, amongst our councillors. Twenty paternal completion, three-turn construction. I think we I think we do it. So we'll sign that. I've signed a lot of things today, and we don't have any budget left in terms of budget authority, but I think we've chosen some good royal decrees to enact. We've enacted a lot more this time. <laughs> That's probably a lot, not we can't probably do much more for the time being. So for now let's speak to the trade delegation. My royal yacht, the Rosiana, good name, smoothly cleaves through the waters of the Zipnana River Delta. I sit on the deck next to Edward Alfonso, President of Swordland. After hours of diplomatic formalities in Palace Resna, the sea breeze felt amazing. Alfonso removed his jacket and looked up admiringly at the wide cable bridge that connected Porta Drazen's two halves. What a great idea this boat tour was. It would have been a pity to spend our entire visit trapped in a stuffy old palace. He rushed to correct himself. Uh, 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 I mean, a beautiful, elegant old palace, Your Majesty. The ship horn let out blast as we passed beneath the bridge. 
I will show Alfonso the old town. I led the Swordish president to the southern side of the deck for a better view of the old town. The late afternoon sun perfectly illuminated the spire of the Zilba Arc Century. Terrific the way you've preserved these historic buildings, but sometimes the past can be a trap. Hmm. I'm happy your country has a president who understands that. I owe a lot to Colonel Sol, but it's time Solden moved on. The Colonel was no fan of monarchies, as you'll recall. Me, I'm more flexible. Uh, countries with differing politics can still find common ground. Exactly. Gus Major, motion the ship's cabin, clutching a bottle. Uh, yes, Gus Major, I remember you from the original campaign. And grinning triumphantly. Oh well, they have it. I tried Quan Tuavo once for a risen chef in Holsword who smuggled it over in his seamless truck. I haven't stopped thinking about it ever since. He turned to me apologetically. Our mutual friend Rosello mentioned I, your yacht had an excellent wine cellar and I couldn't help myself. A uh, man of exquisite taste. Let's butter him up a bit. A toast to exquisite taste then. Butler! Pabble smoothly appeared from behind us with three glasses, and Gus handed him the bottle. Excellent choice, Mr. Manger. Please allow me. He filled the glasses and handed one to each of us. This should taste of cherry and black pepper with a faint hint of leather. We raised the glasses. Sounds quite nice. Uh, to new beginnings. And new prosperity. And new friends. We drank, and Gus sighed with pure pleasure. Alfonso's expression dis bordered on disbelief. All apologies to Geralt of Ribery, but this is in fact the best wine I've ever tasted. I told you, I know certain swordish movers and shakers who'd kill to have access to a beverage of this calibre. Which brings me to the deal I suggested. Ah yes, the free trade of Rizian wine for swordish whiskey. That's a good way to get our relations flowing again, if you'll pardon the pun. I'd have to taste it first. I'll save this till until after dinner, but here you go. Here it is attaché. And uh, pulled out a bottle of Elroy uh, Maroon, 30 year old. I turned to be connoisseurs, Your Majesty. Butler, three tumblers, no ice. Pavel approached with three glasses. I hope this is as good as you say. <laughs> it's even better. Pavel poured us out a small amount of the amber coloured liquid. I'll do the toast this time. How do you people say it? A prozo. We drank, the flavour rushed over my tongue. Wood smoke and forest moss tapered off to a sweet, silky smooth finish. It's heavenly. Like tasting the soul of Erloy itself. Since your treasury crow isn't here to put a damper on proceedings, shall we get straight to it? You and Rizzi and Mr. Manger, we treat women here like eagles here. Alfonso gave Gus a look of warning. I apologise on behalf of my minister. I told him to leave his baser impulses at home. I assure you, Sword is making progress on the status of women. Some of my most trusted ministers belong to the fairer sex. Alfonso reopened his briefcase and took out some paperwork. It's all boilerplate, really. The governments of Rizzi and Sordan are recognising the importance of promoting economic growth and cooperation and desiring to enhance their mutual interests, conducted in a manner that is consistent with their respective domestic laws and regulations. Uh, we'll keep listening. Parties shall agree to cooperate in the development and implementation of sanitary measures. Elimination of tariffs to be completed within six months from the entry into force. Ensuring that respective customs, procedures and other trade-related measures are transparent, efficient and predictable. In equal amounts of 100 tonnes of wine, 50 barrels of whiskey per year. Subject to availability. Here's what I want to do. Phew, I thought that would never end. So this is a trade, Your Majesty. Um, yes, now why are you really here? Excellent, Your Majesty, and yes, there is one more proposal we wanted to discuss. The yacht lingered at the mouth of the Zapana Delta as the sun lowered in the sky, turning the water from turquoise to gold. As much as Sordon's most valued citizens would appreciate your wine, we believe there's something else they'd find even more stunning. He gestured at his surroundings, the down the short sleeve shirt he was wearing. Have you thought about Rizzi's untapped tourism potential, Your Majesty? Um, our peaches put lesbians to shame. The true diamonds in the rough. 
I know that for a long time international tourists stayed away from the Valencius coast because of the delicate situation in Palais. Or Palais. So, sorry, I've been saying Palais the entire time. His relations with Palais have been shaky for years. He didn't seem to notice my correction. My point is there might finally be time to bring your undeveloped shores to life. I took the liberty of hiring a designer to draw this up. He reached inside his jacket pocket and pulled out a sheet of paper with a sketch on it. I recognised the beach it depicted. It was a picturesque stretch of sand in Monkeys, not far from the palace where I'd grown up. Right on the coastline, the designer had placed a sporting complex with a swimming pool and tennis court. On it was a sign, Caronte Resort Valenciris. Hmm... I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, would that be the senior or the junior, Caronte? You've done your research. I see this is Marcel's initiative, along with other members of the Lotherberg Group. Our partners are considering significant investment along the Valencius coast. If all went well, the Caronte Resort would only be the first step. Alfonso swelled the last drops of whiskey around in his glass. I'm aware of how your nobles see Swedish oligarchs. I'm also aware that their well-renowned riches have diminished with each successive generation. Change is not merely inevitable, Your Majesty. It's the only way to preserve the lifestyle to which you're also accustomed. Your grandmother understood that. Hmm. This is a tough one. Um. I'm the king. The nobles had no choice but to acquiesce. So that's a yes on the proposal. Um, yes, but I want it to be less tacky. I'll pass that on to our partners. Alfonso rubbed his hand together. In less than an hour, we've accomplished more for our countries than our predecessors managed in 30 years. I'd say that course for celebration. Butler, another bottle. His name is Pablo Adria, shows some respect. I stand corrected. Mr. Andrea, if you would be so kind. Pavel reappeared, another bottle in his hands. He shot me a grateful look as he filled our glasses. Keeping our butler on side is a very good thing, security-wise, I think. The yacht began to turn towards Port Drazen as the sun disappeared over the horizon. Okay, so we've done some good relations with Sorland. We've got some trade deals going with both whiskey, wine, and also with this new resort. And we've enacted a lot of new decrees today. Tax credits for businesses, housing for the poor, legalising illegal substances. We sold a few more bits of stuff. We've also started work on the gas field. But it does mean that our authority is out, our budget is out for this turn as well. And we're not making any more energy per turn at the moment. But my hope is that with these new things being signed, that will help in the future. The Romus Taurus Hospital should be done hopefully next turn. I'm a little concerned that we may not have enough budget going forward, but we can always sell more energy if we really need to. Two energy for one budget, but it's a lot more energy for, for not much budget return. So we'll have to see. But I think we'll leave things there for today. A lot of foreign policy and diplomatic stuff, and I don't know if I've been making the right decisions. I hope I have been, but I just don't really know. So we'll have to see all to come next time indeed. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.